What's up, kids? Cruise ours. You having fun? Awesome. You guys ready to watch Paul do some cooking? Yeah. So here are our lovely five guests that uh, are going to be able to sample it firsthand. Uh, let's meet them. What's up, bro? What's your name? Where are you from? Ben. I'm from Long Island. What's up, Ben? Yeah. Western Australia. Pat, Ontario, Canada. Hey, I'm Fernanda from Brazil. Nice. All right. Well, let's get this thing started. Make some noise for our two chefs, Chef Colin and Chef Paul Stanley. Cut them up a little. 
Look, he's coming out. <laughs> the stop child is cutting out. Any way you slice it. <laughs> so you don't want to put too many of them in because they're, they're pretty powerful. But we'll put a few more in. And we're going to have this in the... Uh, it's going to be available later for everybody to, to eat or not eat. And if you have any complaints, I won't be available. <laughs> I'm just kind of chopping these at random. Throw them in there. And then, um, what do you say, uh, some basil. Let's take some basil. Come on, you can take it too. Take your basil. Coolest thing to do with basil, just tear it up. That's how you get that great fragrance, that smell. So, basil goes in, some parsley. There's two kinds of parsley. There's Italian parsley and there, that's nice. Put some parsley in. And what do you say? You want to put in some seasonings now or you want to wait? Let's put in some, get some great romaine lettuce. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> what else should we put in? Put in, uh, yeah, let's put in. Get crazy, put in a little frisé and some of this nice mixed lettuce. We're going to put in some, uh, what's the shit some paprika? What do you think? Come on, you're not just good looking, you're talented. Some paprika. We really, I was talking uh, originally about putting in mayo, but we've got this great Caesar dressing that we can use. So. If you want to make Caesar dressing at home, it's awesome. What do you use? Dijon mustard, egg, usually. Yeah. Capers or no capers? No capers. Lemon. Yeah. So I like shrimp, so I like to have shrimp in my Caesar salad. So uh, salt and pepper. How do you like those Benihana guys here? Hi, Mom. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you salt's not your friend. Salt is really, salt is, salt's a good thing. So we mix it up. You want to play the column? Okay, you can play. And then, the um, best way to do Parmesan cheese, you get a, a either a grater that you're grating against, or you get one of these really cool gadgets right here, which is really cool. And you cut it, you cube it, and then you can basically put as much as you want on top. I always embarrass myself in restaurants because if they don't give you like the bowl of Parmesan, the guy stands there and I just, he thinks I can't talk because he's just putting it on and I just keep letting him do it. I'm that one who wants a little sprinkle. I like, I like a lot, so. Okay, Parmesan. Take it like this.
Are we good?
I always squeeze. I always squeeze the sausage. I always squeeze. But I'm alone. That's why I squeeze my sausage. Yep. So once this is going nicely, this is Marsala wine, and it's really cool. Put Marsala wine in, and you can. It should reduce, and it gives it a really cool. What would you say? Kind of like a. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice flavor. I put Marsala wine in a lot of stuff. And um, what else do you think? Yeah. Little chicken stock. Chicken stock's cool stuff. So this is reducing. So reducing just means that you're kind of uh, evaporating the water that's in it, which is cool. So you just get a much more concentrated flavor. I originally learned to cook because I had to feed my son when I was a single dad. And then it just turned into a whole lot of fun, you know? And just, gee, how can I make this better? What can I do that he'll like? And uh, I love cooking at home. I just don't want to put it up afterwards. I'm sorry? Thank you. <laughs> I knew I was missing something. So this is a cool pasta called trotole, and the great thing about it is that when you get these pastas that are real meaty and have a lot of like grooves in it, you'll get uh, you'll get a lot of space that all this great stuff can go into, all these great flavors. So I think I'm gonna put the juice in first. Hey, cool. Take orange juice. Take concentrated orange juice, and if you don't add too much of it, it's got a great acid to it, and uh, it just makes it. Um, gives it a little sweetness that's really cool. And even though we're cooking somewhat Italian, it's there's always room for uh, doing something a little different. So, what do you think? Yum. So the other thing, once you get everything, you know, sometimes you see people pouring sauce on top. That's really not the way you want to do it. You want everything to go into the pan together. And you don't want to overcook your pasta. Get your pasta, what they call al dente. And um, throw some of this in again. No, I think I'm going to use some of the, the, the water, the pasta water. Um, the other cool thing, if you want to get your sauce to stick, see, because there's still liquid in here, you take the water that you cook the pasta in because basically it's become starch water. So it gets, it becomes a thickening agent. So it goes really good in the sauce and it uh, takes it from being like what we would call very viscous and changes the viscosity. So it becomes a little thicker and it hugs, it hugs the pasta more. So, what do you think? We, then we'll put our pine nuts. <coughs> that looks, that smells really good. I think I'm going to stay for dinner. That's awesome. So, what do you think? Good? Good to go? So, second book, which I'm working on now, is um, kind of a continuation of the first book, Face of Music, but it also kind of goes more into lifestyle. So it's more attitude, more of the same stuff that made Face of Music a number two bestseller, and it's also, I think it's six languages now. So the follow-up uh, is a continuation of that, but I also go into exercise and physical fitness with really cool photos, and I also go into cooking, just food that I like to cook. Because, uh, like I said, this is a 
Yeah. Most of us are cooks, so we should enjoy what we're doing. And, um, you know, for me, whether it's painting or anything I do, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I don't really have any background in what I do. But if you trust your instincts, you usually do pretty well. So um, I'll put a little more cheese on top. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Um, you know, we're still working on it now. So it's, uh, it's weird how books work. I, I never knew. Once you hand in a finished book, it takes them a year to put it out. So it's going to be a little while. But it has a happy ending. Beautiful. Hey, Paul, what's your comfort food go to? Comfort food? Ice cream. What flavor? Pasta. I could eat, I could eat pasta every day of the week. You know, they're never going to say it's horrible. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> Do we have enough salt and pepper? I mean, probably could be. Does it need some salt? No. Awesome. I'll give you a moment back to you. Is there a... See, they didn't prepare for me. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm, we're having dinner together. Hi, how are you? What are you, what do you like to do in your spare time? Mm, I like your slime. <laughs> you come here often? Mm, yeah, beautiful eyes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, let's go home. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Where's the well wine? Where's the wine? Which wine? You know, people say to me, you know, are you like a wine connoisseur? I only know the wine I like, so wines like art and everything else is what you like and what you don't like. Nobody can tell you what's good because what's good for one person isn't good for the other. So I tell people the same thing about art. I go, look, you don't need a degree and you don't need somebody to tell you what good is. Like good food, bad food. You know what good food is. You swallow good food and you spit out bad food. So wine is the same way. If you find something, you know, somebody says, oh, you, you know, with uh, red meat, you have to have a red, and you have to have a uh, white with other things. Most of the time, I like having uh, like a Marlboro, New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc a lot of times. But uh, there's so many great California uh, cabs, so I like, I like a good Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, yeah, Pinot Noir. For me, Pinot Noirs are, they just taste like somebody diluted them a little bit. They're, they don't have enough, enough power to them. Yeah, yeah. So, any questions about anything? Next is Soul Station is going to, we're going to Japan in January. We have 12 shows there. Well, the plan is, hush up. Pick a number. Um, Soul Station is going to go to Japan. We'll do uh, 12 shows there. The plan is to either do um, like a, a TV special or to do a, a live DVD and then also do an album. But the album would be a combination of classics that we love. because. I grew up on that music, you know, people, um, look, I love rock and roll, but um, when I was a kid, I was lucky enough to see Otis Redding, I saw The Temptations, um, I saw, you know, Al Green, I saw uh, Solomon Burke, all these great people, so my field house and the music that I listened to initially was a lot of that, plus, 
you know, as a kid, I heard Elvis Presley and so on. <laughs> it's pretty King of Rock. So um, for some people, it was kind of shocking that I would do something like Soul Station, but it's really, really comfortable for me. So uh, the plan is to do an album with old classics and new songs that uh, I have some great, great friends and great writers who will do, you know, music that's very much in that, that mold. So that's the plan. That's the Soul Station plan. Um, I think on the next cruise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a painting class. Oh, yes. really, really, my idea of a painting class is to have fun with people. You know, the idea of instructing, that's not where I come from, you know. I, I just want to see everybody express themselves. And, you know, if you, well, if you, if you get a canvas and some brushes and you decide to paint this, and it doesn't look like this doesn't mean it's not great. So I just want people to relax and express themselves. I try to find new ways to express myself all the time because creativity sometimes is how you can define yourself. So um, uh, doing a painting thing on the cruise would be me, you know, a bunch of people, paints, and we'll work together and, and do some cool stuff that you can take home. Judging from the last two nights, the band's in pretty good shape. How many people, I enjoyed it, it was really cool, not just to have Bob and Bruce, but to have Big John Hart. Yeah! And to have Lydia here, you know, it's uh, Michael Chains, Kathy. You know, to have people who helped shape the band. And, um, and isn't it great to have people around who don't think that we're bricks? <laughs> so, um, so it's been, yeah. Don't talk about Kiss. This guy, everything out of his mouth is Kiss Symphony, right? You're the guy. Okay. Dwight Test. Cricket. Cricket. The only cricket I know is the kind that just step off. <laughs> no. I, I knew I came here for a reason. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, well, thank you. Okay, the gloves come off. Right? <laughs> What? When you bring First Nation to Japan, to Australia, to Japan. You know, I'd love to come. You know, for me, there's a fight. Look, I have a family, and I love being home with my, my children. And um, they want me home, so I can't go out for long periods of time. It has to get broken up. So I, it seemed natural to go from uh, Japan to Soul Station, Australia. but. I'm not sure that's going to happen as much as I'd like to do it, so.
that it takes 10, 20 years for a song to become a classic. Look it up now. When we first did it, it wasn't necessarily a song people wanted to hear. Now it's a classic. So the idea of doing an album and having people not basically want to hear the stuff live is kind of uh, kind of defeats the purpose of it. I, I tell people if you put on a DVD of The Stones live or McCartney or anybody and turn off the sound, I'll show you every time they're playing a new song because the audience sits down. I don't want the audience to sit down. So we're caught behind a rock in a hard place because people say, you know, why do you play the same songs when you're on tour? Those are the songs people want to hear. And I have to say, well, why do you come see us so often if you're bored with, you know, um, if, because we have so many songs that are considered classics. So for us to be able to do what we did the last two nights and play, is that you? November 9th is my crochet day. Um, gee, I didn't know that because I can't hear in this side. You know, my crochet, you know, for, for people that don't know, it's a birth defect that affects, um, I don't even know how many people and there's different degrees of it. I was born basically without a right ear. So, um, and they really had no reconstruction when I was a kid. So I had my ear reconstructed when I was in my 30s and it took about five or six surgeries to, to do it, and what they did back then is they cut your chest open and took part of your rib, which uh, hurts. Uh, but now people talk into my chest. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we're so fortunate, everything's come so far since then. When children have uh, microtias and they, they get surgeries, it's one surgery now. So, uh, you know, look, medicine and, uh, you know, just technology has come so far. And it's amazing. I mean, I'm held together with staples and glue and artificial pieces. And, you know, I mean, thank God for modern medicine. Woo! things start out and you think it's going to be not only creatively great but it has to make business sense and uh, I think it fell apart during during that so um, you know it's uh, it's not only a matter of making something that's creatively great it's making sure that it, it works financially and I, I think there, there was some some problems with that hey, but, a houseware line? Yeah. I didn't know about that, but tell me that. <laughs> well, actually, there's been talk about doing um, dishes yeah. with my art and you know, uh, curtains, bed sheets, stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, it's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, if you told me, look, if you told me 45 years ago that I'd be on a ship and not doing <laughs> dishes. I mean, this is unbelievable, and this is what sets KISS apart from so many other bands, is that you can have people from 33 countries from every walk of life 
from every economic strata, from every sexual orientation, and we're all the same. We all love the same things. You love what we do, we love what you do. We're all kind of like the people who went against the grain. We're all kind of like the people who didn't follow the normal path, and we're all happy, so we win. Because if I stay, you're going to expect dessert, right? Yeah. 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 Come back to family. Uh, my sister takes me to my first family reunion. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.